Hi guys, welcome back to the More Than Muscle podcast. I am your host, Matt Cooney, and this is episode 10. And today we have a bit of a different episode because I am all alone. I'm on my own. So what I am going to do today is I'm going to share a bit about my own story and my own journey. So this is something that I've never actually spoke about before on any anywhere. And I've been thinking about doing it for probably a couple of years now. And between a mixture of imposter syndrome, fear, being scared, a load of different other emotions, I've just never bit the bullet and actually done it, you know? So I thought, why not just do it right now? Um, Essentially, this episode should have been episode one. (laughs) But again, being a bit afraid and having other people on, I was able to kind of take the pressure off myself in one way, if that makes sense. So again, this is going to be a completely raw and real episode. I literally don't have anything planned and I'm just going to speak. And with it, I do think you guys will still get some value from it because again, in hindsight, when I look back at my journey now, I can see it a lot more clearer and I understand maybe why I, I done some of the things I've done and what was holding me back. So hopefully you should be able to get some value from it. So the title of this podcast is The Day My, My Life Changed Forever. And that was December 29th, 2014. So before I talk about that, I'm going to tell you a bit about my life up until that day and in the shortest time period possible. So essentially, I was born in Perth, Western Australia. Um, Don't sound like an Australian, but I was. I lived there until I was 12 or just 12, 13. I went to primary school in Australia, did half a year of high school and then Moved, moved back to Ireland with the family. So there, my parents are Irish. So again, when we, that was not your normal kind of upbringing. At 12 years old, being brought from Australia to Ireland, a complete change of lifestyle scenery. Um, I still remember refusing to go to school the first day there. Um, I was like, I'm 100% going to get bullied. I had a woolly jumper on, a tie, uh, shoes, pants and a belt and like for me I was always in a public school where your uniform was runners shorts and a t-shirt I think I'd wore pants about three times in my life um so again that whole change for me was very uh difficult and I suppose it was just strange uh and like growing up in Australia my obsession was basketball and sports and that's all I knew that's all I did when moved to Ireland kind of 12, 13, found myself in a little small town in Ireland. And I suppose, again, I was probably a bit insecure myself, just wanted to kind of fit in. I even, I lost my, as I accident like six weeks. Um, and again, that from the age of 13, probably till like secondary school, ended up going down bad road, not, not like, I don't know, when I look back, it wasn't the worst thing but I just kind of went off course a bit um got into drinking drinking a lot smoking taking drugs doing all sorts of stuff um at the time I always knew it wasn't for me when I look back now I knew there was more more for me than this you know but I just went through that teenage kind of years my parents split up and I had a lot more freedom for myself so again I was most likely just trying to fit in and that led me down that path but I always I always knew there was kind of more to life than that and I had kept into sports I was all I was I was still sporty playing sports still good, kind of decent at uh, soccer basketball snooker kind of whatever sport I played um, and that that kind of some way kept me on the straight and narrow wasn't the best in school but again wasn't like a troublemaker more just didn't want to be there and wouldn't wouldn't turn up occasionally. Um, so yeah, that that was school. That then finished school, went through a period of time like a year out, and realized then during that year out, done nothing but drinking. Um, 
working in a factory and I was kind of during that year, I was like, shit, need to do something. Uh, that's when I decided to go to college. In my first year of college, that's when I fell in love with fitness originally. I started going to the gym and from I started back playing basketball uh, for the college and a club down there. And I just kind of got my love back for fitness. And essentially, my college years were completely different than most people's. Most people get to college, they get that freedom, and then they start to socialize, they start to um, go out more. I had done enough drinking and other things by the time I was 18, probably to do me a lifetime. So I actually went the opposite way. And the gym for me was my kind of escape and my new obsession. And essentially, looking back now, the reason why I got into the gym was more because I was really insecure about how I looked and I suppose how I felt. And for me, I'm, all, I'm a bit like introverted, quite shy, spent and like most of my years being that more introverted type, but sport for me was always the release. Um, like even when I used to play, play basketball, if you've seen me on a basketball court compared to out, off it, you would have said that's complete, two completely different people, you know? Off it was very shy, wouldn't, nearly wouldn't have a conversation with people, wouldn't, wouldn't make eye contact on the court then, chest up, proud, would lead a team. And again, it was kind of like my ex escape from real life. So essentially for the gym, for me, that was why I started and was just to kind of, I wanted more muscle and to look better as like, it was like a shield of armor that I wanted to put around me uh, because, and again, like looking back now, it was because of my insecurities, my self-doubt and really just didn't, didn't kind of believe, wasn't happy in myself. Um, and again, you wouldn't, I didn't know it at the time, but that's what I just kind of lent to then was the gym. So from there, without making the story too long, from there, finished college, started in working in a gym, um, in a leisure center at home. And then from there, I decided to move back to Australia. And looking back now, the reason why I wanted to move was because I thought that I just wasn't happy in myself and I wasn't fulfilling my potential. So I, what I was doing was I was blaming external circumstances for me not being happy on the inside and me essentially not taking action and doing the things that I should have been doing so i was kind of blaming being in a small town being in a job that didn't I, I didn't mind it but it wasn't fulfilling me so and then i was like oh yeah ireland in general doesn't the weather's not as good the fitness isn't as big in ireland and that was my whole thing was like oh yeah if i get out of ireland if i get to australia i'm gonna be i'm gonna start doing personal training then i'll be get into, into that over there and then everything will kind of fall into place for me. Um, but again, that didn't happen. And the, the reason why is because I was trying to change the outside circumstances without realizing it's the inside that had to change first. Again, what well, I was riddled with self-doubt, fear, uh, anxiousness, and just was like imposter syndrome, not thinking I was good enough to actually do those things. So I did move to Australia and had that big plan to be like, yeah, start personal training, get a job, and then everything's going to blow up for me. Um, took a job in construction. Two and, a half, two and a half years later, I was still there. And again, in, in a steady job, but just wasn't being fulfilled. Um, and then from there, we move into 2014. And I moved, didn't move back, actually, was was in Ireland on holiday from Australia. And December 29th, 2014, around 5.30 p.m., that's when we got some tragic news that my one of my best friends, my first cousin, Pierce O'Brien, was tragically not taken from us, and it's not with us anymore. And that was literally the moment my life changed forever. 
me and Pierce, we lived together in Australia for a year before that um, in 2013. Um, we got, we were always, obviously we were cousins, we, we, and we were similar ages, he's a couple of years younger. So that's, we got very close over there, you know, and we had some of the best experiences of our life. Uh, and essentially the two of us are, were polar opposites. And it, at the time, I, like, I couldn't believe the way he lived and he was, <laughs> couldn't believe the way I lived. Um, so again, just to give you kind of an example, I was that type of person that was very insecure, but it was like safety first. I go for the safe option. You know, I wasn't a risk taker. Like I was stuck in that same job because it was secure. It was um, give me a decent enough wage to live every week. And again, I was just essentially living in fear. He was the type of person that would, with, with the click of a finger, do anything, drop, drop anything, drop a job, get on a plane, like walk up. He woke up in Thailand one Christmas. Um, well, he went out the night before and woke up in Thailand the next day. Uh, that type of person. And like the things he used to do just used to amaze me. Like he would be the type of person you'd come home on a Friday evening, he'd be sitting down playing PlayStation. I'm like, why are you not in work? And he's like, boss a wanker, left. And I would be like, what, what, what do you mean? You can't, you can't just leave your job. What are you going to do? He's like, I don't know, I'll be fine. And I used to think that was absolutely insane because again, me was very much this logical person that was needed everything to be planned and do you know, kind of safety, safety, safe option. And again, for him, that was like Friday, Friday evening on Monday morning, he'd be walking out the door and I'd be like, where, where are you going? And he's like, got, got another job, starting a new job. And I, I just couldn't believe it. I'm like, what, how does this happen? And then I'm, then he would be like, yeah, and it's paying me more money. And then I could, I could be like, do you know what you're doing? No, never done it before in my life. Do they think, do they know that? No, told him, told him I knew what I was doing. And essentially he used to wing it, just wing, wing everything. And again, he, he would, it would all work out for him, you know? Um, and I, I just couldn't believe it. And like, he used to often say to me then, come literally sit at the end of my bed and ask me questions. No, he used to laugh at me, basically laugh at my life. He used to ask me a lot of questions and he'd say like, how many degrees do you have? What do you do? And then he would just literally laugh at me because at the time I was earning about half the amount of money than he was. And he just didn't have any like education degrees or whatever. And he would literally burst out laughing. I remember being like, Pierce, you can't, this is my life. You're just laughing at my life, you know? And that's, that's where essentially at that time, I thought I was teaching him how to live. And when I look back now, it was completely the other way around. I was kind of like that older brother type person that was a bit older, a bit wiser, a bit smarter with like money, what I was doing. So I thought I was trying to help him and trying to, for him to be like, I was like, this is not the way you, you can't live like this, you know? Um, but now looking back, he was actually teaching me things. So on 29th of December, 2014, we, we got that, that bad news. Um, I still remember it well. It's at home in Ireland. I was on holidays. I was visiting my friend's kids when we got a knock at the door and one of one of our other friends that we lived together in Australia as well, broke, broke the news. And from that point on, things for me have just never, ever been the same again. And if you have been following the podcast on episode, I think six with Helmi, he talked about the conservation principle of energy. I think I said that right. But this was something, and I, I said to him on it, I had goosebumps. This was something I, I could never explain what happened to me that night. I didn't, I just didn't know, but something weird happened. And essentially, I think what it was now looking back was this um, principle where energy is basically not created or destroyed, it's just transferred. And I remember when that happened, literally the next day. I woke up and the words that were just going through my head was life is too short. Um, 
that it was just ringing in my head. Um, and even that whole period of time, that funeral, like up until that point, I basically had lived my life in fear. And I didn't just, it was like that fear. I, I just wasn't afraid anymore. Um, and it was like he, what Pierce had given me this type of strength uh, or something to, to kind of keep it together, even in terms of like the funeral. I was one of those people, I could never ever sit around uh, a funeral or a dead body, anything like that. And that was completely the opposite there. I, I was able to, to do that, to, to sit there with him, be completely composed. And it was just such a weird experience. Um, and like from that, I just remember saying to myself, life is too short. And for him, if he would have lived his life, his life was tragically cut short. If he would have lived his life like me, he would have had so many regrets. Where a really good saying is, it's not about the years in your life. It's about the life in your years. And he truly embodied that over his, his life. He done everything. He maxed out what he could. He was in different countries. He literally, that's what I couldn't get over was all the things that he was just able to do. He moved to Australia at the draft for hat at like 18 with knowing absolutely nobody, you know, and even listening to his stories, I was like, you can't, that's, that can't be possible. How do people, how do you, how are you able just to go and do that and be so free spirited and not care? Um, and it turns out in the end, like, thank God he did, you know, and that's, that's where it just all kind of clicked for me. So from, from there, I was home, I was home on a holiday and I was, I had flights booked back to Australia. I canceled them because of the funeral, but I, Stayed, stayed in Ireland for a funeral, booked flights home, back to Australia, January 2015. The day I got back to Australia, I booked a flight to Thailand, I booked, I booked a flight home to Ireland, and I booked a flight to Croatia to, uh, to go to a festival in Croatia. So my plan, I knew I was like, going to Thailand, traveling, going to go back to, I'm moving back to Ireland, um, because essentially for the last two and a half years, I had just been procrastinating and just living, getting by. Um, and I wasn't actually taking action. I wanted to get back into fitness. I wanted to get back into the uh, personal training. I wanted to start personal training. And again, that was what I'd always loved, but I just wasn't doing it out of fear. And that's, that's what I decided. And then from, from there, I just put together a plan. So I was gonna work for three or four months, get back, get some money together to get, go off travel and move home. And I, lucky enough, I got my job back in the gym I was in and I started online coaching during that time. So I remember going to work in like 40 degree heat, coming back. Uh, I was on the building site doing scaffolding, coming back, settling into check-ins then that evening. And at that time, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I just knew I, I could help people. I had knowledge to give and I could help people. And Again, it was literally a Microsoft Word document. Didn't there was no business in it? I just wanted to help people, and that kind of kickstarted everything for me. So when when I moved back, then I started doing PT straight away. And just to give you kind of a an insight to how much kind of fear and anxiety uh, and imposter syndrome I had was like I was qualified PT seven years before I ever charged someone for a PT session, which is when you think of the fitness industry these days, that's, that's kind of insane. But I also remember before I was leaving, like going back to Ireland, a lot of people were like, what are you doing? Like, why are you leaving Australia? There's so many there are opportunities in Australia and things like that. And I just remember thinking to myself, and saying it actually to a friend that I essentially felt in Australia like I was just a number and I, I felt that in Ireland 
I could, because back then, and in Nina, especially the town I'm from and I grew up, grew up in, I knew I could help a lot of people with the knowledge I had, the mistakes I had made, and essentially help them become fitter, healthier, happier. And that's, that's where it started for me. It wasn't about like, it's just about wanting to help people, you know. And then from there, that has just grown into uh, an absolute passion and obsession for health, fitness, mindset, and everything else that comes along with it. Um, so that's kind of my journey, I suppose, from once I moved back to Ireland, then started personal training. And from there, just started, things started to grow. And again, it was, I had an absolutely zero plan, zero idea of what, how to run a business, how to do anything. All I knew was I could help people and I needed to do this for, for me and to make me essentially start to live life on my terms and doing what I wanted to do because I spent 20 something years living, living a life that I wasn't happy with and that wasn't actually fulfilling my, my potential, you know, and what I should be doing. So that's where a lot of people will ask me what, like, how are you, they'll say like, how are you so driven or how, how do you, how are you so passionate about what you do? And that to me is, is simple, you know, that's for me, somebody else's life had to end for me to start living mine. That's, that's my driver and I don't want that to happen to anybody else because, again, that's a, tra a tragic, absolute tragic thing to happen. And for me, like, it, it got to that point. It took something that big for me to literally, for the light bulb, the switch to go off in my head to be like, enough is enough you need to start actually living your life. And when you have something like that, anchoring your motivation, anchoring your, your drive, your passion day to day, that it, it becomes a lot easier. There is, there is no, oh, I don't feel like doing anything today. You know, like obviously I have them days, but when, when you have such a force behind you and such a motivator and, something like that in in your head that will always keep continue to drive you you know and i know a lot of people speak about finding your why like what your really your real why is and again sometimes that can be a bit cliche and it can be a bit like oh yeah you need a why everyone needs a why but really you do but it, it's it's a lot deeper it's a deeper why it's not like this superficial kind of thing you know and again that's that takes a lot of soul searching and kind of searching inside inside you to be able to find find what it really is that drives you. But when you do, it, it's that's what keeps you going, you know. And so that that in a nutshell is is my story. And again, I could go into it a lot a lot deeper. There's so much more in it, but. Again, I just wanted to give you guys uh, an overview of how how this has all come about. And it's something I've never shared before. And I've been a bit like anx anxious about it and kind of been like, you know, why, why would anyone care about me and my story? But I, d I do think there is a couple of valuable snippets in there and lessons from it, especially that with everybody's life I suppose that that whole thing of not just not doing what you're supposed to do not feeling fully fulfilled in your life you know and that's something we've spoke about on quite a few episodes here is about people doing things to try to fill a void in their life and for me definitely when I was younger or when I was in Australia that's what a lot of drinking a lot of partying all other stuff a lot of that was just trying to fill a void in my life because I wasn't truly happy and fulfilled with the things that I was actually doing. And it's, it's not until 
I realized that and I started doing the things that I'm supposed to, you know, that I'm put on this earth to do, that I really started to live my life the way I wanted to. So hopefully that helps you guys in some way. I just want to say an absolute massive thanks to every single person that listens to any of the More Than Muscle podcast and for and anyone across any of my social medias. It's such a so appreciative of it. And like I mentioned before, it <laughs> took me seven years to start doing PT. It took me nearly two or three years to make my first uh snapchat 10 second video so then none of this comes naturally to me and i just really really hope you guys get some value from it and most of all hope you don't just listen but you actually take action on it because that's the whole point is to take this stuff take what we talk about take little nuggets of information things that apply to you and literally go take action on it straight away because that's the only way things will change. You can read all the books you want. You can do all the, all the research, all everything, whatever it is, podcasts, videos, audiobooks, talks, whatever it is, till you actually take action on the things that you need to change and that you want to change to make your life better. You're essentially wasting your time. So I'm going to leave you guys there. This is the end of the first season. So I wanted to, I, I didn't want to make this podcast with um, an expectation or to keep it going with the expectation of I have to release a new episode, episode every week and then that takes the, the value out of it, the enjoyment for me and I just don't think the quality of it would be as good if your, my heart truly isn't in it. So instead I've decided to take some time away, prepare another another season, we will be back and again and then from there we will kick back into it so thanks again for everybody that's listened to any uh, any episode and to all my guests for coming on it's been an absolute blast the last couple of months and really looking forward to the next series thanks guys